For those of you smart enough not to buy a 13th or 14th gen Intel CPU, let alone three of them, let me catch you up. Crazy am I. We'll see whether I'm crazy or not. In early 2024, people started reporting major instability issues with Intel's Raptor Lake CPUs. We're talking random blue screens, reboots, and programs closing out of nowhere. The root cause, something called vmin shift instability, and microcode flaws that push voltages higher than Intel intended, which caused transistors to degrade faster over time. Now, I bought an i7-13700K in July 2023 for my new gaming PC. No issues at first, then in April of 2024, I bought another one for my secondary PC. Despite seeing news about these microcode problems, and look at me now, it's June 2025 and I'm a big dummy. Both PCs are rebooting randomly like they're on strike. Of course, because I wasn't having any issues early on, I just kept using them without a second thought. New BIOS updates came out to help mitigate the damage these CPUs were causing to themselves. But did I install them? No. Why? Because they required a FAT32 USB-A flash drive under 32 gigabytes. What year is it? Do those even exist anymore? So I skipped it. Big mistake. So now what? Well, before we get to that, there's another issue. These CPUs are rectangular shaped, which means the typical pea-sized thermal paste method doesn't fully cover them. Plus, when you clamp them down, they can bend or bow, reducing contact with the heat sink and hurting temperatures. That's why using a contact frame and proper thermal paste is recommended. Intel has extended warranties on these CPUs to a total of five years. I'm gonna try and get the two that I have receipts for replaced, and in the meantime, I'll install contact frames and fresh thermal paste. Luckily, my Micro Center receipts still list the CPU serial numbers, but I still need the batch numbers for the warranty claim. Easy, right? Just grab the box it came in. Except, of course, I threw them away without taking pictures because, again, I'm a big dummy. Thankfully, the batch number is also printed on the CPU itself. So when I pull them out, I'll snap a photo and get this warranty process started. I'm also curious to see how much we can lower the temperatures with these new contact frames and thermal paste. I have some screenshots of their temps under load after the last rebuild, so we'll compare those before and after to see if we can keep these machines stable. But in all reality, the damage is done and most likely the CPUs just need to be completely replaced. I picked up three Thermal Grizzly contact frames, but I've read that there are cheaper alternatives that work just as well, so if you're dealing with this, maybe save a few bucks and grab an off-brand one. As for Thermal Pace, recently I've been watching Linus Tech Tips and Jay's Two Cents compete in some benchmark competitions. Linus used Splave's Performance Thermal Paste, so I grabbed three tubes of that. Apparently, it offers some of the benefits of liquid metal without the hassle or risk. We'll see if that holds up. So we've got Deep Thought 2 right here, which needs a new contact frame. So we've got that out. Let's put the new contact frame in. All right, CPU in place, Thermal Grizzly in place. This doesn't seem to line up. All right, what the f Why doesn't it line up? Did I do it backwards? What the crap? What the f is happening? Because now this doesn't even... You remember when I said I'm a big dummy? Okay, so see this little notch right here on the bottom? It, I had it like this, which did not line up. But if I do it like this, ta-da, it lines up. God, I'm stupid. Check that out. That looks way better. That looks great. Crisis averted. Big dummy established. Splave. One, performance, thermal, paste. All right, unlock your potential. Uh, I would just like this to not crash. Uncap your PC's performance with high thermal conductivity paste. Do not swallow, avoid contact with eyes and skin. Good advice. Okay, so this on here, we'll do the... There we go. I think that's pretty good. Okay, let's take the 
paste paddle, which I've already lost. Paste paddle. So let's spread this out evenly. Oh, not too shabby. Not too shabby. He's doing a pretty good job. I don't know how good I'm doing, but let's just spread this evenly. It's got some give to it. That's nice. So it's like you can't really push it too much. Okay. Well, just spread this out a little bit more. Okay. So for a CPU that is probably dead anyways, I think we're okay. New contact plate and thermal paste. I think we just test it out at this point, right? Let's make sure it turns on. Let's see what kind of temperatures we get and see if it'll stay on. Preparing automatic repair. That was fast. So yeah, it did not start correctly. Okay, restart. Then delete. All right. I did update the BIOS. This is the latest version. I did that on the last rebuild. You know what? Look at this. Creator Genie is on. Yeah, we're going to have Genie off. DDR speed is at 6,000. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if it was just happy now? But let's see if we can make it through this, uh, this benchmark. This is looking pretty good. See, the problem is that I've done this before where I've run a bunch of the benchmarks and I'm happy with it. I leave it running and then randomly throughout the day, I'll come back and it's at the login screen. I mean, just rebooting out of nowhere. Oh, let's look at the temp. Did it go up to 100? It got up to 90. All right, CPU test. Crank those fans. All right, 13205. What do we get? 13287. So even better. All right, CPU temperature uh, from 54. And then up that CPU test brought it up to 94. Oof. So when it's cranking, it gets up there. 90, 95, 90, 68, what's hardware monitor say? Uh, 97. Okay, well, this has been fun. Um, we'll see how this does and do the other two PCs tomorrow. Ran some tests overnight. It passed with 3D Mark and Fur Mark and Cinebench. But the thing that got it crashing was Windows Update. And after maybe four or five attempts to just update Windows, it barely was able to get past the login screen. So we're gonna turn it on and uh, just demonstrate that. And then we're gonna move to the next PCs and uh, we'll you know, definitely ship off this CPU for a warranty. We'll see if it tries to install it. Basically nothing's happening. Oh, there we go. How wonderful. Nice, fantastic blue screen. All right, demonstrated. You see it, that's what happens. Since I know the contact frame comes with a torque wrench, we'll just use the one that comes with it. What? This one came with, well, that's cool. Maybe I missed it on the on the last one, but it uh, actually comes with thermal paste. I got some thermal grizzly thermal paste. The last one didn't have one. Okay, contact frame. All right, processor. This is like a thousand times faster than the last one, just because I know what I'm doing. It is so hot. Don't we have a little wrench? This is what we're gonna use, little wrench. It's fine, there's too much crap. Oh, wow. Blave, I get one and a half out of each tube. Like, okay, maybe this is two applications, but for a tube to be like this big, does it say how much is in here? No. Usually it'll say like how much is in each tube. All right, I think that's a decent application. Yeah, I think we're fine. All right, boom, we in there. We done did it. Let's run some benchmarks on this. Let's see if we get some Lower temps. All right. Oh, okay. So we've got Franken PC hooked up. Um, this one wasn't really having the kind of problems that Deep Thought 2 was. So I don't know how this is going to work out with the warranty. I mean, obviously, I would like to just replace both of them if I can. But uh, 
Deep Thought 2 definitely needs a warranty replacement. This one, uh, I think it's just, we're putting the contact frame and the new thermal paste on and getting uh, maybe some better temperatures. So we'll see how it does. This one is so quiet compared to Deep Thought 2. And that one's just full of Pro Series Noctua fans. This one is all Corsair RGB fans. We're gonna run some benchmarks and see what kind of CPU temperatures we get. All right, CPU in the 40s, 30s, that is so much. I mean, it was getting 97 degrees. And I mean, I know it was a air-cooled versus a an all-in-one but geez okay this says it got up to 81 but even 81 compared to 97 it's great honestly what i think i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna leave this running all night and see what i come back to in the morning <laughs> Whew. all right so we are here the next day Computer has not turned off or restarted. Uh, looks like we've got uptime a day and nine hours and 45 minutes. No crashing. It was running a stress test on Port Royal. Um, CPU uh, top temperature got up to 81. This is definitely a success. Uh, the results I had after the last rebuild were at 100C uh, during benchmarks. So we definitely are getting better temperatures uh, when it's being stress test. So this is, this is great. Um, I think this particular CPU is fine. Uh, so we're not gonna have to submit a warranty on it. Um, we're, we are done with this guy. We got our last PC. Put the new contact frame in. This one I think has been working just fine for quite a while, so probably won't need a warranty on it. It's an i9-13900KF. Um, yeah, been running it pretty hard for a couple weeks. Uh, no reboots, no random shutdowns. Uh, so really, it's just going to be lower temperatures and new contact frame, which should be good. All right, so Time Spy Extreme stress test just finished. Uh, looks like we've got some good CPU uh, temperatures. Pretty much the highest is 66, 68. Yeah, these temperatures are fantastic for a i9. Um, pushing it pretty hard. I think this is this is wonderful. Um, we're gonna do one more with the uh, Time Spy Extreme. And I'm gonna skip the graphics test and just do the CPU test. All right, and just see if we get a uh, CPU temperature above, what was it, 68? Yeah, okay, looks like CPU did not go much higher. Let's see, at the top it was at 78. So 78, for the top end of pushing the CPU, I'll take it. Okay, you know. And this has been running for about three hours now, two hours and 48 minutes. That's way more than Deep Thought, Deep Thought 2 was doing, so I'm happy with this. You know, we've been through a lot today. Three new contact frames, some fresh splave performance thermal paste, and a roller coaster of CPU emotions. Deep Thought 2's i7, that thing is toast. No paste or frame is going to save it. Sometimes, even when you try your best, it's just time to let go. But Franken PC01, that i7 dropped 15 degrees and held steady for over 24 hours. And the Gibson's i9, same story, 12 degrees cooler and solid as a rock. So what can we learn from all this? First, hey Splave, hook us up with a bigger tube of that paste. Three applications from two tubes 
I need more for my experiments. Second, to Intel, how do y'all let these issues slide through two generations? You're on thin ice. I'll be looking at other options for a while. And number three, spoilers. Did you see Thunderbolts? They just kill Taskmaster in the first act. They have a super OP villain that they take out with a group hug, and Elaine from Seinfeld dupes them into a press conference, and these heroes that just defeated the real-life incarnation of existential dread are just suddenly deer in the headlights to some cameras and reporters? Whatever. Video's over. Bye.